Well, hello there and welcome to this bonus episode of Travels with Jordi. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, all the while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising someday soon, if that's the sort of thing you might find interesting. Please consider sticking around and subscribing. You know I'd love to have you. Today's episode is really just catching up on having too much footage for a single episode yesterday. Yes, by the end of this show, we will have the panel finished. Not installed, but finished, and it looks great. Let's jump back. Okay, folks, if I thought yesterday was miserable, we're only just getting started. Now I have to cut out a lot of very tight rectangular holes in this panel. So, if it gets started, basically, we know we have the basic electrical panels for the breakers. And, well, now that I know I put the breakers in backwards, these now go on this way, don't they? Oh, well, I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so they go here and here, roughly. Um, they're offset from the edge by an inch. And across the top, I'm going to put a series of uh, voltage and ammeters. So these two here um we'll go there and these two here will go here these are relatively cheap uh chinese combination volt ammeters these two for ac uh, these two for dc these two for ac and what i want to do there is monitor uh the ac voltage that's shore power in other words what i'm drawing off the dock or generator and then on the other side whatever it's downstream of the inverter in other words what the boat's actually using and on the dc side a uh, similar situation where I want to see before and after uh, charge loads and total load on the panel. But anyway, we'll get into what the meters do later. Now it's just the layout. The last thing that goes down here is the controller for the charge inverter. Currently, I have an old Xantrex, 1000 watt. Quite a nice machine, but it's only 1000 watts, uh, but I got it cheap. Um, this space is actually designed to suit the controller for a uh, Magnasign, Magnum Energy. Um, quite a sophisticated and interesting inverter that will go there so that's the basic layout of what i'm doing already and everything up in the middle will be uh the remaining remainder of the things that i want to switch here but keeping in mind that this is primarily a power distribution and information panel many of the things that are switched are switched at the helm but some things will be switched here blower controls um overrides for bilge pumps things like that uh timers for the blowers as well as um, level gauges, not fuel, but uh, water, gray water, and uh, black water will all be here somewhere. And this is really yet to be fully developed, but I have a fair amount of real estate to do it. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward. All I'm going to do, I left exactly one inch border around all the various devices, mostly. Uh, so I'm just going to do that with one inch masking tape, and then I'll know where the various objects are and I have to cut just inside in some cases really really tight just inside because there is very little shoulder on the flange for this particular device and as I mentioned before uh, I put the breakers really close to these panels too so these have to be tight holes okay let's get some tape on All right then, so I'm gonna start with an easy cut, or at least a relatively easy cut. Uh, this one here for the uh, uh, charge inverter controller. And I'm gonna cut it out with my fine tool with a brand new blade. Now generally I've had great success making cuts like this, but it doesn't mean it's without stress. So yeah, let's have a go here. wasn't fun but I did it Arr. let's do four more uh, six more <sighs> Well, I can say that first one taught me I have to try harder and now that I'm trying harder uh, it's feeling pretty good okie doke there we go Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. 
All right then, well, as much fun as this is, I gotta get outside and spray um, those two panels with the black textured finish. Hope this works out well. Uh, while there's still some warmth and light to the day, uh, of course, I'm only spraying them outside. I'll bring them right back inside uh, so they can start to cure in a warm environment. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, let's see that texture come out, but let's get this back inside before it's too cold. Easy. Okay. Wow. This has gone better than I expected it was going to. Okay, two big ones. There we go. I tell you. I will be glad, I am glad, that that is the last cut. Now, <laughs> see what kind of shape this is in underneath. I don't think I have torn any veneers, but oh, we'll find out in a second. Now I'm losing the light, but I have to be able to get some uh, uh, I'm gonna actually put some more tongue oil on this basically because it lacked as a uh, as a tack cloth to take the dust off of it. I think. <laughs> Good. Now to quickly get this into the aft cabin where there is little or no dust. Well, it's an interesting way to start the day. I am now at the very, very end of the dock, which is really cool. <laughs> um, had a little um, boat move around this morning and uh, I'm very, very pleased. I now have very, very easy access to get in and get out. Uh, not that it was all that difficult, but anyway, marvelous. Okay, so let's get back onto the panel. Okay then, well, I'm, this is going really, really well. I'm having to actually just put multiple coats of tongue oil on the actual panel here, or board, or whatever you want to call that, the door, uh, because I can't find uh, my wife on Polly. Uh, this will work just fine. But anyway, let me show you how beautiful these turned out. Look at these. Aren't these just nice? Can you see that uh, textured finish on them? Really, really pleased with that. And they just look so nice on here. There we go. Now I'm just doing a quickie just to have a little bit of a see how that looks. I'm very, very happy with that. And we have all this room for future stuff. Anyway, um, <laughs> we've had a couple of days of tough stuff, drilling that, cutting this. Today is no exception. Let me explain. So you use the same blue C breakers for both the uh, AC and the DC circuits. Uh, they basically rated 15 amps. Uh, circuit breakers don't care whether it's AC or DC, they're just measuring amps. So. Uh, you can imagine there's going to be a whole row of these, 16 on the DC side and 10 on the AC side. And well, that's pretty straightforward. And each one of them, uh, one side of the terminal will go off to a circuit, but the other side is common. In other words, we supply power um, to one side of all the breakers and they're connected together with a big long bus bar. Now, if you buy these panels pre-made, they come with a bus bar, that's handy. However, as far as I can tell, they're not available um, individually so i have purchased this nice piece of uh, stainless steel uh eighth inch by half inch stainless and um this will be absolutely perfect for making the bus bar out of the only problem is i have to drill a bunch of holes for these little screws an eighth of an inch apart all the way along and drilling in stainless steel well those of you who are good at it will say ha peter it's no problem you just need the right tools the right coolant to the right drill press the right I have none of the above. I have a drill press. I'm not digging it out to put together. I'm going to use an assortment of, of uh, coolants and I'm going to use an assortment of uh, drills. What I do know about stainless steel is that it bites and work hardens very, very quickly. So you need to drill slowly, cleanly with lots of coolant and lubricant. Let's jump right in. And here's my favorite little workbench, which is going to be very handy right now because I'll be able to use it um, to lay out the um, length of the um, bus bars I need. So I'm going to make them uh, roughly an inch longer than the panels and that'll allow me to um, have a little 
tab at the end that I can put another hole in, a larger hole, for the main power feed for the bus bar. So let's, uh, here I'll just do this other one down here. Okay, I'm just going to take and cut these off so I have the correct length. Okay, so the idea is to basically use the holes that are already here as guides to mark through to uh, my new plate here, as long as I'm pretty well centered. Now it's tempting to just run the uh, center punch down in here, but it's actually a little loose and I can tell you I won't be able to keep my registration after pounding it that many times and I don't want to risk chipping the paint. So I'm just going to uh, put a little dot with this marker and it's black so it's not going to make too much of a mess if I touch the sides. And there we go. Now still lamenting uh, misplacing my a uh, beautiful start center punch. I'm gonna have to carry on with this one and I'm not sure how well this is going to work in stainless. Yeah, mix it in. Excellent. Now if I know anything, this is not going to want to stay put. Um, so I'm gonna put some little screws in and sort of clamp it down and we'll see how effective that is. Of course once there's some holes in it I could move these um, to the actual holes, but let's see how this works to get started. So I'm going to use fluid film as my lubricant of choice. Um, largely because it's a, an excellent cutting lubricant actually. It's not a very good coolant because I'm not going to need very much of it. If I use uh, other sprays that I have available, let's say uh, WD-40, uh, it just dissipates so quickly that it's a good coolant but not a very good lubricant. So let's see how this works. Okay, so again speed is crucial so we're gonna slow this down and go relatively slowly and again lubricant is crucial. So let's see if I can make this first um, hole relatively well. I'm starting obviously much too small around an eighth of an inch. Getting nice long curls, which is good. This is going to take a while, I can see. Okay, I think I've hit pay dirt. I've gone through a whole bunch of different drill bits, find a, trying to find one that would actually cut a good curl, and apparently that is what I need. So it's looking good now. Let's see how if I can keep this up. Okay, well, that was hard work, but I think it was very successful. Now to move up to the actual drill size. <laughs> yeah, holy mackerel. Whew. Had to change my shirt. I was splattering fluid film all over my good shirt. Wow, that was a project. All right, so in an effort to um, recreate the other one as easily as possible, I'm just going to flip it over and uh, clamp it up again and just drill down through the existing holes. We'll see if this is a good idea. I, I, I don't know. Oh my gosh. Done. Well, and good morning. Well, yesterday's adventure in drilling stainless steel was by the time I'd finished the holes, I just had to stop. It's remarkable how, I, I've said it, never mind, I'm not gonna go on about it. Okay, so, several days of miserable work and one day of very, very pleasant work assembling it all together. Well, I say very, very pleasant, but just because the various components, components fit in the various holes doesn't mean they're gonna be lined up properly. So, there may still be some tweaking to be done, but all in all, I think this is gonna be a fantastic day. Hope you enjoy it too. Okay, so here we go. All the bits that need to go in to the panel to see if they align properly. To be fair, the bus bars do not uh, need to go on before we install um, the components in the panel. I just wanted to get them done this week so that they could be uh, attached. Okay, so what I need to do, obviously these are just drop-ins. So uh, these are the AC ones and so well they just drop in. Uh, too easy. Are they aligned properly? I don't know. Let's uh, just get them in for now. Uh, there we go. Um, the inverter uh, charge um, just drops right in and it has a little bit of play because I wasn't sure because it's anyway I wanted a little slack on that. Now the next thing I have to do 
To be able to see if the breaker panels actually fit properly or align properly um, with the little panels above, etc., I need to install the top and bottom breaker to make sure they actually fit into these notches properly. So I'm going to install the top and bottom breaker in both panels and uh, we'll see how everything lines up. So far it's looking really, really good. I am going to try and keep everything from getting scratched up, both the uh, panels and the wooden door here. So, um, let's get going here. You know, I really actually like the um, pan head screws rather than the countersunk. I just like the utilitarian look of it. Ooh. Okay, let's keep going here. So there's, this is the AC panel side and it just drops in there and I think it's looking pretty good. Okay, let's do the DC panel. Seems to fit perfectly. Okay, so let's see if I am actually correct in that these are all lined up exactly as I wanted them. Mm, this could go up a little bit in this corner. I may tinker with that. And on this side, everything's lined up very nicely. This will be centered. Um, you may remember that I mentioned this is not the... Um, inverted charger uh, remote that I'm going to use eventually. The one I'm going to use eventually is for a Magnum Energy and it's exactly the same size as the panel. But this doesn't look too bad in the meantime. And the meters up here are actually very nicely aligned. Okay, I'm going to take a little sandpaper and tweak the top left corner of this hole and we'll be very, very close. Very close, very close. All right then, well I have adjusted the size of this hole and this meter now fits perfectly. Very, very nice. Okay, so uh, now it's time to screw down the breaker panels. And I'm gonna have to do that with little stainless steel pan head screws. Uh, I think in time I'll probably paint them black, but in the meantime, it's what I have. So if I set these up and line it up up there and up there, we're good. I'm not using any sort of uh, centering drill for this because it's a fairly tight uh, fit. And so that will just screw right down into that plywood very happily. Very nice. And uh, to confirm that I'm keeping my consistent width down here, we'll take a tape measure. And this should be one inch. And it is, and at the bottom it is also one inch. Very nice. There we go. Let's get a couple in this panel. See how this is looking. And the inverter remote uh, basically just gets centered on the panel above. Splendid. All right, let's just put the rest of the screws in. And there we go. Holy moly. <laughs> All right then. The um, perfectly pleasant task of populating the breaker panel. Um, I don't actually have enough breakers just yet, but let's put in what I have. Mm -hmm. Come on out, Peter. Get ya. Well, there we go. I'm short on breakers, although I have four more uh, that are currently in use. Uh, so I just have to get a few more breakers to completely populate this panel. The truth is, I'm only going to be using eight circuits here for now, two are spare. And on this side, I haven't even designed, uh, but 16 circuits is plenty for a boat this size. So I don't even know if I'm going to need them all, at least for now. Um, I'm super, super pleased. In fact, I don't even mind the stainless screws, although I'll, in a little time I'll figure out uh, what I'm going to do about those. Let's get it back on the, uh, the panel down below. Aha! But before we can do that, we got to install all these beautiful little LEDs. Um, very exciting these. They're going to be a little bit fussy to wire uh, when I get to that. Uh, anyway, that's not this week's problem. Let's get these in here without scratching up the panel. And in they go. And this should be a pretty tidy friction fit. Oh, and it is. Oh, oh, oh so nice. So 
just loving it just loving it okay now i just wanted to say and i don't know if i mentioned yet but of course we have this large expanse on both of the breaker panels which is obviously where the labeling will go the label for each individual circuit now on uh blue sea or other uh, consumer uh panels this would be a little window with an led behind it where you can put in a uh, semi-transparent or at least illuminated style uh little stickers little labels that go in here um, I've always been very frustrated with the, the ability to get exactly the label I want. Now, I, this is not a knock on Blue Sea. In fact, they have an, a very expansive label variety you can get as an, an expansion pack. But anyway, I didn't want to go that route. Plus, I don't really see any value in illuminated labels, believe it or not, because I'm going to have overhead lighting right here. I'm never going to be working at this panel in pitch dark, perhaps in a situation where you have um, breaker panels, um, near a helm or somewhere where you have to keep lighting low um, for, to, to maintain uh, a night vision but that's definitely not the case with this panel so these will just be labels of some sort i'm not quite sure what i want them to be tidy i want them to look you know a little bit industrial uh, they, they may be um machined out of the black um arborite style they may be just labels in the meantime they will probably just be custom labels by one of those little brother p-touch thingies anyway i don't know what they're going to be but they won't be illuminated there'll be no holes drilled in other words in this section of the panel whatever goes on here will be stuck on okay 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 we need the knob we need the hinges and i've realized i can't install it um down in the forecastle because i have those temporary breakers hanging off and it's a kind of a mess uh, so that's going to be next week. Uh, so you can look forward to me installing all this in the actual panel and starting to get some of these circuits live. But uh, let's just put the last little bits on this and uh, call it a wrap. Okie doke, okie doke. This is ready to be installed. Well, folks, I am absolutely thrilled with this panel. It, it, there was a lot of anxiety uh, going into assembling it. I really didn't know if all the drilling and the cutting would work out as well as it did. And it's not perfect by any means, but it's close enough for me. It'll work. It's functional. I have lots of room for extra stuff that's going to go in here. I have not yet designed what any of that stuff is, to be fair. But let's get some proper wiring in next week and get this thing up and running. But... Before, there's something special that happened this last week I want to share with you. I want to introduce you to Aaron Bradley, who just came and gave me, brought me this. What is in here is a painting? Painting. Painting yeah. that you've done. You're an artist yes. on behalf of Brody. Yeah, he commissioned it. That commissioned it. Brody, thank you ever so much. Uh, I understand Brody is also a past supporter of the show and perhaps uh, other things. Thank you so much, Brody. Thank you so much, Aaron. Can I dive right in? Yeah, go for it. Okay, excellent. I'll put the card aside just yeah. for a moment. Because this is the exciting part, right? <laughs> exciting, exactly. Yeah. I, I'm nervous, excited. Are you? Right. <laughs> Have to do this with a little bit of uh, decorum, you know, not yeah. too not too Christmas morningy. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. No pressure. No pressure. Oh, Jordy. Oh goodness, goodness. Oh, it's on canvas, folks. This is pretty much yeah. it. It's a super cool, and it's a composition of two things that didn't exist at the same time. It's Jordy. I'm Jordy. And of course, this never existed because the name wasn't there no. when Jordy was there. No to, like, very clever. Very, very, very clever. That's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And all the things that I have aboard the boat that are art are Jordy. And which is really interesting because they're yeah. also by Aaron. If you look behind really? you, that 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 stitch piece there is by my daughter Aaron. Oh, so every piece on the of art wonderful. on the boat and a couple more that go that's with amazing. it are by Perfect. Aaron's. Okay. Yay. Well, thank you, thank uh, you ever so much. My pleasure. That's You're really welcome. fantastic. You're welcome. Really, really lovely. My and we'll pleasure. find just the perfect place to put that. Yeah. Thanks oh, again. That's good. No Isn't it great? I just just love it. 